Our subject for today, heads and tails. What did I say? What was our subject last night? Come on, what was our subject last night? What was our subject on uh, Thursday night? What was our subject on Wednesday night? Read my lips, that's right, that's right. It was read my lips. Last night was the word made flesh, and this morning it is heads and tails. Before I, it is now five after 12. I'll release you before one, say amen. amen. If you're not using this, what should you do? Kill it, yes, kill it. And you will not violate the law of God. We don't want phones ringing while we're worshiping God. If you go to a courtroom and you sit in the presence of a judge and your phone rings, <laughs> mercy, that's right. <laughs> There's an empty cell with your name on it. So please, let's respect God. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter one, verse nine. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth, and I want to speak God's words. And so from time to time, you simply say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Favor number three, think. Isaiah 1.18, what does that say, the first part? Come now, let us reason together. God gave us a mind that's powerful. Think as you listen. Think as you read the words. Concentrate. As you do that, the Spirit of God will enlighten your minds. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this holy day. Thank you for the presence of your angels to protect us, the Holy Spirit to guide us. We thank you for your love. If we have sinned against you, forgive us, dear God. We did not mean it. We love you, but we hurt you often. We thank you you're not a God who holds grudges. Now, Father, we present ourselves to you. Speak to us. Put your words in my mouth, your ideas in my mind, the humility of Christ in my heart. Father, bless those listening online as surely as you will bless us in this building. Bless all the countries represented by those watching but I always say, particularly the host country of the United States. Father, right now, shower down a sweet blessing on all our guests. We are delighted and honored by their presence. God, wherever your people are worshiping you now, bless them, I pray. And let this presentation glorify your name and enlighten your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Revelation 12 reading from verse 1. Our subject, heads and tails. The last book of the Bible, Revelation 12, reading from verse 1. I read from the King James Version of the Bible. If you have it, you may read aloud with me. I would be delighted. What book did I say? Revelation. What chapter? Revelation. Reading from what verse? Revelation. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and, and seven crowns upon his heads. Now, read the next verse carefully. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them where? Yeah. Yes, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Who is this dragon? Let's go to verse 9. Are you there? The Bible says, and the great dragon was cast out. That old devil called the serpent, the serpent and Satan, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. The Bible symbolizes Satan as a dragon because Revelation is a book of symbols that need to be interpreted. And the best interpreter of the Bible is 
the Bible itself. And so verse 9 explains verse 3, that this dragon is Satan. Now, verse 9 says he was cast out. Why did that happen? Let's go to verse 7 of Revelation 12, our subject, heads and tails. The Bible says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against a dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was the place found any more in heaven. The Bible tells us, sometimes to our shock and surprise, there was a war in heaven. The first war did not begin on earth. As a matter of fact, this war in heaven take place, took place before the earth was created. There was a war in heaven. Michael is a biblical reference to Christ, and his angels fought against a dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. Question for you, where did Satan get angels? Go to 1 Chronicles chapter 29. How did the devil get angels? He didn't make them. How did he get them? First Chronicles 29. What's our subject? Yeah. Heads and tails. It's 10 after 12. I release you by one, if not before. What book did I say? What chapter? 29, reading from verse 11. Let's read microscopically, and the words we read should humble us. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Pause, take a breath. Continue. For all that is in the heaven, come on, is, mm -hmm, stop. Everything in heaven belongs to God, including the angels. How did Satan get angels? Somebody said he stole them. He what? He what? Oh, they sided with him. But how did that happen? Go back to Revelation 12. I mean, you're quite right, but let's go to the Bible. Revelation 12, let's read verse 3 again. And 4. Now, in verses 1 and 2, whom do we meet? A woman. How is she clothed? Clothed with the sun, come on, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, go to Genesis 1. We'll come back to Revelation 12. I hope you don't mind if I have you running back and forth through the Bible. That's biblical aerobics. Do you have Genesis 1? Let's read from verse 14. Remember the third favor I ask you, what is that? Think. Let me pray again. Father, as I continue, God, restrain my carnal nature. Let your glory be my only business. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And so we have sun, come on, we have moon, we have stars. What was their function? To give light upon the earth. Now, that's part of physical creation. Physical creation has spiritual lessons because light is also truth. Are you with me? Now, let's go to Revelation 12 again now. Let's read verse 1. We go from the first book to the last book. Are you there? Yeah. Read with me. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman, read with me, clothed with the sun. Where do we first meet the sun? Genesis 1, 14, 15. What was his function? Give light. Clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. We have three sources of light in Genesis 1, 14, 15. We have the precise three all around this woman. She is clothed in what? Light, truth, which is light. Remember, we deal with symbols. Now, 
Verse 3 says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven horns, seven heads, and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Now, carefully, verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. Okay. Go to Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9. What is this tail? What's our subject? Heads and tails. Mm Mm-hmm. Isaiah 9, let's read verse 15. You have that? Not yet. It's okay, I'll wait about five seconds. You have it now? You know why we can't find the books of the Bible so easily? These things. Mm. They find them for you. (laughs) And screens. There's no need to find, you have to find them for... Well, I'm about to ask you who can recite all books from Genesis to Revelation, but I won't do that. Okay, Isaiah 9.15, do you have that? Read with me carefully and microscopically. What does that say? The ancient and honorable, he is the head. Finish the verse. The prophet that speaketh lies, come on, he's the tail. So what does the tail symbolize? Lies. Now, go back to Revelation 12. Read verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, how were those stars led astray from God? Lies. Deception. What's our subject? Heads and tails. We're meeting the tail. We will move up the ladder to what's best, the head, in a few minutes. Deception, lies. Now, the Bible does not tell us precisely what the lies were, but we know they were lies. How do we know that? Let's reason through the Scriptures. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. The book of Deuteronomy 32. How many of you are thinking? Say amen. Amen. All right, half of you are not, but it's okay. Deuteronomy 32, let's read verse 4. Do you have that? Book number 5. Do you have that? My friends online, I hope you're still with us. Wherever you are around the world, God bless you as you follow along. He is our rock. Come on. His work is perfect. All his ways are a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. How is God described? A God of truth. God is truth. Go to John 14. John 14. You know this verse very well, verse 6. Do you have John 14, verse 6? What does that say? Jesus said unto him what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. God is the God of truth. Jesus says, I am truth. Go to 1 John chapter 5. Towards the back of the Bible, find Revelation. Revelation, Jude, 3 John, 2 John, 1 John. 1 John 5. Let's read verse 6. Our subject, heads and tails. 16 minutes after 12. Do you have 1 John 5? Read the last part of that verse. Because the Holy Spirit is... Tr- now, what do we have? When you combine Deuteronomy 32, 4, John 14, 6, 1 John 5, 6, what do we have? Father, come on. Son, come on. Holy Ghost are truth. then a lie is anything that goes against truth. Symbolically, the tail represents a lie and a false prophet. The prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. Satan, in a certain sense, was a false prophet. He used lies to deceive one-third of the holy angels in heaven. Let me ask you this, as you sit in your humility. Are you as smart as angels in heaven? No, nor am I. If the devil deceived perfect angels, can he deceive you? Yes. How does he do that? He twists the truth. 
Now, when the devil twists the truth, he does not twist it so that the truth becomes unrecognizable. He twists it, but his version looks disturbingly similar to the original. Let's leave heaven for a while. Let's come down to earth. Go with me to Genesis chapter 2. What verses do you think I'm about to read? If you've been coming, you've heard me say it over in 16 and 17. You just let me down. 16, 17 of Genesis 2. Do you have that? Yes. Not yet. Some of you are still looking. It's the first book of the Bible. Chapter 2, 16, 17. Do you have that now? Yes. Read with me. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Who spoke? God. What did God say? Thou shalt surely die. Let's go to chapter 3. Let's read from verse 1. Our subject? Head and tails. Are you at verse 1, chapter 3? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, He shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. And the serpent said unto the woman, verse 4, you tell me, ye shall not surely die. Now, God said, thou shalt surely die. The serpent said, ye shall not surely die. He added one word and changed light into darkness. One word. As Eve listened to the serpent, she had a choice to make. She heard what God said because she also told the serpent. This is what God said. Now she's hearing what the devil said. And she has to make a choice. Your parents tell you, be home by 8 o'clock. Your friends say, come on, what's wrong with you? Let's stay out a little longer, get home by 11. You have to make a choice. Do I listen to my parents or to my friends with undeveloped brains? Are you following me? <laughs> Who do I listen to? Sadly, Adam and Eve followed the devil's word. I told you before, let me tell you again. You don't have to go there, just listen. Genesis 1, 3, and God said, let there be light. So the light in that garden was made by the word of God. Are you with me? Verse 11, Genesis 1, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass. Eve was standing on grass. There were no pavements in Eden. She was standing on something made how? By the word of God. The serpent was made on the sixth day. Genesis 1, 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after its kind, cattle and creeping thing. Of course, back then the serpent didn't creep. It began to creep as a result of a curse, but it was made on the sixth day. The serpent was in a tree. Genesis 1, 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit. What I'm trying to say is everything Eve saw reminded her she could trust, come on, the word of God. There wasn't a blade of grass that was made, how? By the word of the devil. She had no proof that Satan's word could be trusted. And yet, and yet, help me, she shows Satan's word. Do you know people do that today? They do it today. I have never read, perhaps it exists, I've never seen it, 
have never read a scientific study that upholds the benefits of smoking. Am I talking to myself? <laughs> and yet, and yet, help me, people smoke. I have not yet seen a paper that promotes the health benefits of crack. And yet, and yet, help me, people smoke crack. And the list is almost endless. Let me ask you a question. Don't answer me. Does this apply to you? Is there something you're doing for which you have no biblical support at all? Let's leave the Garden of Eden. Let's go to the desert. Exodus 32. The hard-headed Israelites. Well, don't laugh. They're no different from we are. So take back that laugh. <laughs> you took it back? Good. <laughs> okay. What book did I say? What chapter? Reading from verse 1. It's now 25 after 12. When did I say I'd let you go? Can you trust my word? Okay. <laughs> All right. Exodus 32, reading from verse 1. Let me pray again. Father... As I continue, please, God, possess me 100%, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves unto Aaron and said, Up, make us what? Gods, which shall go before us. For as, as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. You see, a lot of us serve God if we can see something. They couldn't see Moses, and so the, the faith crumbled. We have to see. That's what Thomas told Jesus, or the disciple, except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails. I will not believe. And so people, they want to see a miracle. They want to see something in the sky. Why doesn't God write something on the sky where he wrote it in the Bible? We don't know what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, verse 2, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and they brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, finish verse 4, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Here are your gods. This is what brought you out of Egypt. Verse 5. And when Aaron saw it, what did he do? He built an altar before it. What's the purpose of an altar? Give me one word. Worship or sacrifice. Worship. He built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation. Who was Aaron? High priest. The spiritual leader. Mm -hmm. He made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to whom? The Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink. Finish verse 6. And rose up to play. Now, Aaron made a proclamation. We will worship this image and dedicate it to God. Listen to me carefully. The word worship is not always a safe word if it's not based on truth. The word church can be very dangerous if it is not based on truth. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. That was the Romans. The church said, crucify him. Listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. And don't hate me. The most dangerous place you can be is in the wrong church. Amen. 
If you study Revelation, God has his harshest punishment for a religious organization. Mm -hmm. His harshest punishment for a religious organization called Babylon. When the Jews said, kill him, Jesus pronounced a curse. Well, they put the curse and God said, fine. They said, his blood be on us and our children, not on the Romans. Are you following me? Not on the Romans. His blood, they used the Romans to kill Christ. Let me say it again. The word church is only safe if it is based on truth. The most horrific event in the Old Testament, or the New, both all the new, the destruction of ancient Babylon and the destruction of Jerusalem. Of Jerusalem, the destruction of Jerusalem in the old, sorry, and the destruction of Jerusalem in the new. Mm -hmm. You read the writings of Josephus, people were eating their babies. Mothers would agree, I'll eat your baby today, and then you, you'll eat mine tomorrow. Starvation, because the Romans had surrounded them, they couldn't get food. This was the city of God that had rejected truth. Are you following? What's our subject? We've taken enough time to look at the tail. Let's look at the head. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. We read verse 18. Colossians 1.18, it's 1230 on the dot. Before we read Colossians 1.18, Satan deceived angels in heaven. One third followed him. Satan deceived sinless people in the Garden of Eden. Satan working through Aaron deceived almost all the Israelites except whom? The Levites. There were 12 tribes. 11 went with the error. Maybe some Levites went, but most did not. Satan is killed at deceiving most people. Colossians 1 verse 18. Read with me. What does that say? And he is the head of the body. Keep reading. The church. Stop. Jesus Christ is the head, the church. Let's go to 1 Timothy 3. Let's read verse 15. We just read, Christ is the head of the church. 1 Timothy 3, verse 15. Are you there? Read with me. What does that say? But if I tarry, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself, thyself where? In the house of the Lord. Now take a deep breath. Finish the verse. Which is the church? God, the? Go on. The? Uh-huh. And? Of the? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The church of the living God is the pillar, that upright thing, and ground of the truth. Christ is the head of that. Truth. He calls himself truth. He's the head. Satan, let's hear what Jesus says about Satan. Go to John 8, let's read verse 44. This is also very, very serious verse, very embarrassing. I'm glad Jesus said it and not I. John 8, 44. Very embarrassing and sobering. Because it capsizes, overthrows a cherished belief among Christians that God is the Father of everybody. Read it with me, verse 44, John 8. We're listening to the words of Christ. Ye out of your Father, come on, the devil. Stop. Now, to whom was Christ speaking? The church. Leaders of the church, particularly. Because as the shepherds go, so go, come on, the sheep. Ye 
out of your father, the devil. Keep reading. And the lusts of your father, he will do. Now, Jesus identifies one of the lusts of their father or desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is, finish the words, no truth in him. Stop. He was a murderer. You're just like him because you're trying to kill me. Talking to a church. Keep reading. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. That means he speaks his natural language. Finish the verse. For he is a liar. Stop. What did Jesus say in John 14, 6? I am the way, the truth. What did he say of the devil? He is a liar. We have the head, truth. We have the tail, come on, lies. What do we have? Heads and tails. But why do I say heads? Let's go to Matthew 28. Let's read from verse 18. Matthew 28 from verse 18. Our subject, heads and tails, is 25 to 1. Time flies. You have a decision to make for God, make it. Don't wait. Do you have Matthew 28, verse 18? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, What? All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Keep reading. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, come on, and of the Son, come on, and of the... Mm -hmm, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now go to Acts 17. Let's read verse 29. You have that? Acts 17, verse 29. Read with me. What is that saying? For as much as we are the offspring of, yes, we are the offspring of God. We follow God's word. Like father, like son. Keep reading. We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art or man's device. Yes, the Godhead is not gold, silver, stone. It is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Heads and tails. Satan has himself and his evil angels who deceive God's people. Now, we're sitting in a church, and I keep saying things about the church that's not pleasant. Well, not me, the Bible. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. And I hope I say something that puts a smile on your faces. You look so sad. 1 Timothy chapter 4, let's read from verse 1. This is Paul writing to a young pastor. Scholars believe Timothy was still a teenager when Paul called him to assist him. Imagine that. The mighty apostle calls a teenager to assist him. Young men can be serious for God. Somebody say amen. amen. It's not only skateboards and video games. You can be serious for God and young women. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. Read with me. What does that say? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, come on, some shall depart from the faith. Stop. What do you understand by the latter times? The last days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some shall depart from the faith. Keep reading. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You see, if you leave the faith, you have to believe something else. In physics, there's something called equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there's an equal. It happens spiritually. You leave truth, you invariably embrace error. There's no middle ground. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Now, based on the Bible, can you identify the very first doctrine of the devil? Thou ye shall not surely die. In other words, when you're dead, you're really not dead. You go to Pluto or Mars. 
He shall not surely die. The first doctrine of a devil. Now let me be general. Anything that goes contrary to thus said the Lord is a doctrine of the devil. But it's difficult to detect it for a very good reason. Let's identify that reason. Go to 2 Corinthians 11. Let's read verse 14. 2 Corinthians 11, reading verse 14. And this should alarm you. Not to the point where you lose your faith, of course, because you're holding on to Christ. Nobody said amen. All right. Do you have Second Chronicles? Not Chronicles, sorry. Corinthians, yes. Chapter 11, verse 14. Read this microscopically and slowly. 14 and 15. Read with me. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Stop. He transforms himself. God will never make Satan an angel of light. He transforms himself. He comes as an angel of light. Now, go to Colossians 1. Let's read verse 13. Colossians 1, verse 13. Colossians 1, 13. Read with me. What does that say? Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. What is the power of darkness? The power of Satan. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. I hope you don't mind going from verse to verse, but I don't want to give you my opinion, you see. I want you to leave this church and say, this man gave us some opinions. My opinions can't save you. They can hurt you, but not save you. Do you have Ephesians 6? Here's a very familiar verse, verse 12. When you found it, say amen. amen. Read with me. What does that say? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against what? The rulers of the, yes, darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Darkness. That's the kingdom of Satan. Now, he transforms himself, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14, into an angel of who does he try to look like? Christ. Mm. If he's the head of all angels, are you with me? He wants to transform himself to look like a, gig, a good angel, he will look like the highest angel. Of course, Christ is not an angel, but he's called archangel, means the head of the angel. He tries to look like Christ. Here comes someone to you looking like Christ, and he tells you, thus and so, you'll do it. Because he looks like Christ. Does a wolf come as a wolf? How does a wolf come? As a sheep. Mm, the Bible says that he comes as a sheep, and no one is intimidated by a sheep. Satan himself. He's transformed into an angel of light. Read verse 15 now of 2 Corinthians 11. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, the evil angels. That's what we're up against. And so Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're up against demonic forces that look Christ-like. How do you tell the difference? This, the word. Not a miracle. 18 minutes to one. Not a miracle. You say, what do you mean? I say, let the Bible tell you. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We read from verse 9. Our subject, heads and tails. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. This is about the Antichrist. Before we get to verse 9, let's read from verse 3. Of 2 Thessalonians, reading from verse 3.
Who has prayed for me and said, Lord, put your words in that? Uh, thank you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And those of you who haven't done it yet, you have a few minutes left. <laughs> what book did I say? What chapter? Reading from verse? Read with me, what is that saying? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the coming of Christ, shall not come except they come a falling away first. Stop. Was there a falling away in heaven? Yes. Was there a falling away among the disciples? Yes. John 6 says many disciples left him because they did not like what he said. They said this offends us. There will be a falling away from truth, not a falling away from church. The devil is not intimidated if you go to church because he goes. He's intimidated if you follow truth. And so 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, not necessarily the church service. Because church gives us a, an environment to be comfortable. We have friends. It's a social experience, which it ought to be, but that's not all it is. So people dress the way you dress. They eat the way you eat. They have the same general standards. You feel comfortable, birds of a feather. Mm -hmm. But remember, the church said, crucify him. Now, that they shall not come, except they come a falling away first. Keep reading verse 4 of 2 Thessalonians. What does that say? And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, we finish in three, who opposeth, verse four, and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship. The devil is opposed to everything that is of God. And that includes you. You know, the devil doesn't like you. When he gets you to smoke to look cool, he doesn't like you. When he gets you to have seven women, he doesn't like you. Or seven men. He doesn't like you. The devil doesn't like his demons. He doesn't like himself. Satan does not love. He does not. You know what Jesus said about him? The thief cometh not, but for the steal, come on, to kill and to destroy. Now he destroys very attractively. When God said, if you eat, you die, the devil said, if you eat, you won't die. For God doth know, in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. He shall be as God. He presents sin as attractive. He kills us attractively. But you're still dead. Who opposeth, verse 4 of 2 Thessalonians 2, and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God, sitteth where? In the temple of God, come on, showing himself that he is God. What is 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14 said? Satan himself is transformed into an is the light. He sits in the temple. The temple is the church. Showing himself that he is God. Remember you that when I was with, yet with you, I told you these things. Paul is reminding I told you that. Now, speaking of this demonic power called the Antichrist, let's go to verse 9. Whose coming is what? After the power of? Listen carefully now. With all power and signs and lying wonders. Now, lying wonders does not mean the wonders are fake. It means they have a wrong purpose. Satan can perform genuine miracles. When you rush to a church just because you see miracles, you have the wrong motivation. Your single motivation must be truth. Amen. Satan can heal. Remember Luke 13, the woman bent over? Jesus says Satan had her that way. If he bends you over, he can straighten you up. Ah, oh, you're not listening. I'm talking to myself. The devil performs miracles. His angels can perform miracles. We see that when, well, we see that when Moses went to Pharaoh. Moses threw down his rod. What did the magicians do? They threw down their rods. 
Moses did one thing, they did something else. Of course, up to a point. And we thank God it's always up to a point. The devil can go. Satan can perform miracles. Our only sure foundation is thus saith the Lord. In heaven, the devil deceived one-third of angels, and they followed him. On the earth, Satan deceived the entire human population, Adam and Eve. Are you with me? Fortunately, Jesus Christ came down and redeemed them. Can you say amen? amen. In the wilderness, Satan, working through Aaron, deceived almost all the Israelites. The deception was so widespread that God told Moses in Exodus 32, verses 9 and 10, and God said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. It's as if Moses was holding God back. Have you ever held back your buddy from fighting? He held God. God said, let me go, Moses. Let me kill them. Moses said, no. Don't talk to God like that unless you know him. <laughs> Are you following me? Or you'll be a French fry in a hurry. Don't talk to God like that unless you know him. God said, let me kill them, Moses. Moses said, no, Father, no. They're your people. But let me digress. What a beautiful thing. Huh? You can talk to God like that. Father, don't do that. Don't do that. My neighbor treated me badly. Don't hurt them. Don't do that, Father. I'll take it away. Jesus took Calvary. Don't do that, Father. And God listens. We see the woman clothed in the sun, moon, and stars, all the light. And here comes this dragon. His tail drew the third part, which we talked about. My brothers and sisters, I told you earlier, Satan has an organization called Babylon. That's the greatest enemy of truth on the face of the earth. Now go to Revelation 17. Let's see something interesting. It is 10 minutes to something. Revelation 17. <laughs> let's read from verse, let's read from verse 1. Let's read the Bible. I'll let you go. Please don't panic. I'll let you go. Because preaching is hard work. You get to preach very tired. You know, most preachers, they leave a pulpit. The first place they want to go is where? Take a nap. Mm -hmm. Do you have Revelation 17? Father in heaven, as I come to the end, be with me, please. Don't close off your help. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Verse 1 of Revelation 17. Read with me. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials. Come on. Talk to me, saying unto me, what? Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Keep reading. With whom? Kings of the earth hath committed fornication. Come on, and thee? Have they made drunk with the wine of her? Mm -hmm. Next verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit, where? Into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a what? Scarlet colored beast, having... Seven, full names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold, precious stone, and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of a fornication. Now, spiritually, fornication is mingling with false doctrine. But she has it in a golden cup. So it looks attractive. You see the outside. You don't see the inside. What did Jesus tell the Pharisees? You paint the sepulchers of the saints. You white, he said, you whiten sepulcher. You look nice on the outside. On the inside, dead man's bones. Verse 5 of Revelation 17. And upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now in Revelation, a woman is either a true church or a false church. This is clearly, come on, the false church. Verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, finish the verse, I wondered with great admiration. Now, John sees a religious organization killing people. 
You see? He, he can get it. He doesn't see the Roman Empire. He doesn't see the Persians. He sees a religious organization killing people by the millions. And he said he wondered. Couldn't get it. And the angel said, Wherefore didst thou marvel, verse 7? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. And he goes on. The supreme, the second highest deception of Satan, he has two, is to use a church to overthrow the work of God. Because no one would suspect that the devil would use a church. He may use a strip club. Are you with me? He may use a casino. He may use a whorehouse, a church. Yes. A few years ago, there was something called gospel aerobics. You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Then there's gospel uh, rap. You ever heard of gospel rap? Then there's gospel rock. Very soon, we'll have gospel fornication. There's gospel everything. As if, if you attach the word gospel, it's good. The word church is only good if it's based on truth. This woman, false church. There is a power earnestly desiring to mislead you. That power is Satan. And the tool he uses is deception. The Bible gives him four names. Look at them quickly and then I pray. Go to Revelation 12, read verse 9. Then we go to Revelation 20, read verse uh, 2 or 3. Revelation 12, verse 9, we read that before. Our subject, heads and tails, we're coming to the end. Read with me. And the great dragon, that's one name, was cast out. That old serpent, come on, call the... And four names. Go to Revelation 20. Revelation 20, reading verse 1 and 2, verses 1 and 2. Read with me. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Read now. And he laid hold, come on, that all, which is the, and, same four names. Now, let's look at the four names. What's the first one? A destroyer. He tries to destroy you, kill you. He tried that with the early church. It didn't work. What's the next name? Serpent. Deceives. What's the next name? He's an adversary. What's the last name? He's an accuser. But the one that works best is serpent. Are you with me? It has no violence. It has no violence. The one that works best, whether dragon, serpent, devil, Satan, is serpent. That's why his tail drew the third part even though he started a war. But his success was not based on the war. It was based on deception. The deception occurred first. Then there was a war. Let me urge you. Jesus Christ has one desire for you. What's that? Life. To save you, eternal life. Mm -hmm. And your children. The devil has one desire for you. What's that? Death, Death and your children. Pick. Pick. This one or that one? I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. That's divine advice. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Romans 6.16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, of obedience unto righteousness. Choose. What did Joshua tell the Israelites? Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. Whether the gods, of which one, the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me, and my house. We will serve. In the Bible, to serve is to obey. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
as your brother in Christ, I urge you in the presence of a holy God, the, the demons are also listening, choose truth. His truth endureth forever. Jesus Christ is truth. Revelation 19 verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. Let me ask you this and I close. I keep saying I'll close. Don't answer me. I keep pushing truth over lies. Is there some area of your life not based on truth? If the answer is yes, change. If it's not based on truth, change with God's help. Are you in a relationship you shouldn't be in? What do you do? Change. You decided to get into it. Decide to get out. Mm -hmm. God will not come down and take the cigarettes out of your pocket. Mm -mm. You're a living being. Make a decision, and then he gives you power to carry out that decision. Get out of it. You're stealing on the job? Come on, talk to me. Stop. And pay back. You're robbing the IRS? Come on. Stop. And pay back. You're cheating on exams? Stop. Study. <laughs> Heart. You'll be shocked you never needed to cheat. It is not just up to God. It is God and we. God says, choose. It's closed. How many of you will choose truth? Can I see your hand? Truth. Stand up with me. Those of you online, the question is for you, choose truth. No life built on error will enter the kingdom of God. Choose truth. I'll ask you one other question, which is similar to the first. Is there some area of your life based on error? I'll say it differently. Is there one of the Ten Commandments you and I are knowingly violating? Don't raise your hand. There are 10 of them. Go down the list. Exodus 20, 1 to 17. Deuteronomy 5, 1 to 15, 17. That section. Look at the 10. Which one am I violating? You may be doing it ignorantly. And the Bible says, in the times of ignorance, God winks. Because you don't know. Acts 17, verse 31. Verse 30, sorry. When you don't know. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. God is so nice. If you're ignorant, he does not hold you responsible. But he arranges for truth and you to collide. If there's some area in your life where you're deliberately violating one of the Ten Commandments, stop. With God's help. I'm going to pray. If you need spiritual help, because this message has opened your eyes, and you really need some spiritual help, before I pray, come. Come quickly. We pray right up front. Come. Not all of you. Those of you who need urgent spiritual help, come. I'll wait for you. Then I'll pray. Those of you online, come in your heart. Come. I need spiritual help. I know generally we all do, but I'm speaking, I really need spiritual help. Come. We pray right here. Come. Or there's an area where I'm in bondage. I need to be delivered. It's serious bondage. Come. Christ came to set the captive free. There is an area of my life where I am in serious bondage. Come. Let's stand under the head. Get away from the tail. The head is truth. 
the tailors or anybody else. Serious bondage. I need to be delivered. Come. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth. Finish it for me. The truth shall. Mm -hmm. Error is bondage. Truth is freedom. Anybody else? I'll give you 60 seconds and I will pray. Anybody else? God bless you, sister. Those of you online, you can come in your heart. God understands. You know, David said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Ask God to do that. When we look at ourselves, we see a lovely picture. When God looks and then he shows us what he sees, we're horrified. But he does that to save us. 30 seconds. Some area of my life where I am in bondage. It could be pride. Come. 25 seconds. Don't wait until the next service. This is a service for which God intended for you. 20 seconds. Christ is a specialist in deliverance. But he does not deliver us to disobey. He delivers us to obey. Disobedience is bondage. Obedience is freedom. 15 seconds. Some of you online, you may want to be baptized. You need to let us know. Who in this church has made a decision to be baptized? Can I see your hand? Anyone has made a decision for baptism? God bless you. Good, 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 good. All right. Anybody else? A decision for baptism? You've not yet made it. You're making it now. We have God's daughter. Some of you online are making that choice. Let the church know so we can arrange and plan for that happy day. It produces happiness in heaven and on earth. Now, where you are, if you can, kneel with me. If you cannot, God understands. Let's kneel and we'll pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for being long-suffering, dear God. Thank you. You're not willing that any should perish. You've told us clearly in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, or verse 4, you will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Father, while the devil is powerful, we know that Christ our Savior is all-powerful. As we bow before you, Father, if we now realize where we have willfully, deliberately, intentionally, flagrantly been violating your standard for us, forgive us, dear God. That's why Christ died. Now give to us that determination that Daniel had when he purposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meat and the king's wine. Let us purpose in our hearts to do what is right in your sight by your indwelling power. Father, deliver us from error and admit us into truth. I pray for that person who is in bondage in one form or another, whether it's cigarettes, alcohol, pornography, whatever it may be, overeating, the person who is bound in some habit, their father, that is surely 100% destructive. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, break those chains and deliver that person from darkness to light. Bless the one who's made a decision for baptism. Bless those online who've made similar decisions, dear God. And for those in the valley of decision, let them choose on the side of truth. As we leave, let mighty angels take us safely because the enemy always tries to kill us. Let us meditate on what we've heard, Father. And let me say one more time, dear God, put into us an insatiable appetite for the truth and a horror and a hatred for error. Keep us faithful, Father. When you come into your kingdom, save us, dear God, and our children. We pray in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen and amen. God bless you. Remain standing for the closing
To close our service this morning, shall we all stand and sing, When We All Get to Heaven, on hymn number 333, When We All Get to Heaven. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Let God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. God bless you. Travel safely. Those of you coming back, we see you at 4 o'clock.